Hey everybody. All right, so I want to share with you today a simple system that I use um, when I'm working with clients um, around food and nutrition. This is a great like jumping off point in looking at our relationship with food. So really quick, if you don't know me, my name is Melissa Adrian. I'm a certified um, health coach, personal trainer, nutrition coach, intuitive eating counselor. I've been doing this for many, many years. And I know that Oftentimes when people come to me, they're feeling like the relationship with food feels a little bit kind of chaotic, a little bit out of balance. And the tendency can often be to go to do something really strict, really rigid. And unfortunately that often backfires on us, right? We go into these strict diets. Um, they're oftentimes not sustainable or they can cause our relationship with food to be even more out of whack. So what I like about this is it really creates sort of like a, a soft place for us to land, a gentle place for us to come back to. That's actually really sustainable and really effective. So as you can see here, I call this nourish, balance, satisfy. These are all three things that we want to do and we want to look at in our relationship with food. So I want to walk you through these. And again, these are just simple things that you can come back to. Obviously, everybody is different. Um, your relationship with food is different. Your history with food is different. But I have found that in general, most people, when we come back and look at these three things and kind of start here, um, again, it feels like a very doable um, place to start that also creates a, a greater sense of sort of calm um, in our relationship with food. So let's go through each of these. So the first one is nourish. So what I love about this is we're focusing on what we're adding. Most diets are all about what we need to take away and what foods are, you know, quote unquote bad. But with this, we're looking at where maybe do I have some imbalances in my diet or where can I be um, adding in things that are going to help my body feel its best, right? And this can do just that. It can help us function more optimally. Um, if we have some imbalances with like maybe vitamins and minerals that could possibly help correct that, um, just help us feel healthier. And even things like you know, skin, hair, nails, all those types of things. Um, when we're nourishing our body, we're going to notice um, changes with those types of things. So we're focusing again on what we're adding in. Okay. So what we do, first of all, one of the biggest things I see is a lot of inconsistency with eating. People are trying to, you know, be quote unquote good, you know, maybe they're skipping meals. Um, maybe they're going long periods of time without feeding their body. So the first thing we want to do when we talk about nourishing is just get into a consistent habit of eating meals throughout the day. Ideally, every you know four to six hours, giving our body some sort of nourishment. Okay. And again, we're focusing here on adding in, you know, can I get in a, a vegetable in this meal? Can I get a little more fiber? Can I get a little bit more protein? Um, and making sure that we're just giving our body nourishment so that it feels its best. So why this is so important. Okay. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to really establish or reestablish trust with our body. What I love about this principle is what we're really doing is we are working with our body, right? So again, a lot of times we feel like we're working against our body. We're trying to get our body to change. We're trying to get our body to, to, to be better. We're trying to fight against all of our urges. But when we look at nourishment, um, this is really about teaming up with our body to really listen to what it's telling us and to reestablish that trust. The reason I have a picture of a child here is, you know, you think about if you were taking care of a child, they were your responsibility. I'm a mom, I have two daughters. So, you know, no matter how bad of a day I've had, no matter how much my kids have misbehaved, I've always, you know, fed them meals. I've always made sure that, you know, they are getting what they need um, in terms of nourishment, right? And they'd always have the most healthy meals, I'll admit that, but right, I'm always, I'm never gonna punish them by not feeding them food, right? Because I want them to feel safe. I want them to feel like their needs are getting met. And so it's the same thing here with nourishment. We want to make sure that we have um, this sense of like, this is my body. I'm, I'm, we're on the same team and I'm going to take care of it. Um, so we have that mindset of food abundance, just meaning that again, we're looking more at the positive side of like, what can I add into my diet? And this can often create a, a greater sense of calm. So again, if you've ever started a diet and you just start to feel panicky, there's all these foods you're not supposed to eat. And then suddenly you're, you're thinking about them and you're spending a lot of your energy in that trying to like willpower your way through the day. That can be exhausting. So what I like again about this is we're starting off with something where we're focusing what we can do, what we can add, and it can create create a great sense of calm, and again, sort of help us team up with our body. 
to get to a better place with food. Okay, so that's nourishment. The next one is balance. So with this, we are going to take it to the next level and we're going to focus on balancing out the macronutrients just a little bit more. We don't have to get crazy here. We don't have to like count our macros or count our carbs or do any of that. Um, but we are just going to make sure we're paying attention to, am I giving my body a good balanced diet as best as I can? Um, this is also a mindset thing, which we'll talk about here in a minute, right? So making sure that we're not going to extremes. We're not getting too rigid. We're not, um, like I said, we're not getting to the point where we're obsessing about, you know, foods that we're not supposed to eat, okay? Uh, why is this help? It increases or sustains our energy, okay? We're going to have better energy when we have a balanced diet. And we should see a decrease in um, hunger, meaning that we just have a more steady like hunger and fullness throughout the day and a reduction in cravings. So a lot of time when we're having cravings, it's because our body's not getting everything it needs. So when we're nourishing it, we're feeding consistently, like we talked about, and we're balancing our macronutrients, it can help with some of those cravings we might be experiencing. So what to do here is, as I mentioned, we're looking at balanced eating in terms of making sure we're eating all the food groups. So I know over the years, diets have said, don't eat carbs, or don't eat fats, or don't eat this or that. But uh, there's really only three macronutrients. We kind of throw water in there as a fourth one. But as far as foods that give us energy, carbs, fats, and proteins, and each of them has a really important job in our body. Our body needs all of them, including carbohydrates. So we don't, we don't want to eliminate. We just want to look at how we balance. And again, for everybody, it's different. If you're a runner, for example, you're probably going to need a little bit of a different um, breakdown than somebody that's maybe a weightlifter or somebody that's more sedentary. Okay. But all of them have an important role and we want to make sure including all of them. And then the second part of that, as I mentioned, balance mindset. So yes, we're eating for nourishment, but we're also making sure that we're eating for joy um, and that we enjoy the foods that we have and that we let it be something that bring satisfaction, which we'll talk about in the last one. So just really quick, when we look at the, um, the macronutrients, Carbs, fats, and proteins, a lot of times we pull vegetables out, even they are technically a carbohydrate. They don't really provide a lot of energy, but they do provide a ton of vitamins and minerals and fiber. So when I look at balancing my diet, I'm looking at each of these things. So if I'm building a meal, it's sort of like, okay, do I have an appropriate amount of protein, carbohydrates, um, fats? Can I add a veggie? Sometimes you can't, right? Like I'm not going to add like, I don't know, broccoli to my oatmeal or something like that. But it's just a really simple way that we can look at, am I getting a, a fairly balanced meal? Okay, again, we don't have to get obsessive about it, but that's an easy thing that we can sort of look at. Um, and again, each of these things plays a different role. When I'm, I know for myself, when I'm eating more protein, I feel fuller for longer. Um, I notice that my blood sugar is a little bit more stable. I notice that I don't have as much uh, cravings. So it's something simple that I can do, okay? As I mentioned, one of the big things we're trying to do is just help to keep our blood sugar levels and our insulin levels more steady throughout the day. So when we have these balanced meals that include all of these things, um, we tend to see um, steadier blood glucose levels. Let me show you here kind of, again, what this looks like, right? So we won't get too sciencey here, but just a quick example, when we're eating those balanced meals, we're eating consistently, um, and we're nourishing our body, what we'll notice is if you see down here, we have in the, in the green here, more steady blood sugar levels, we're going to have higher energy. We're, our hunger is going to be lower and slower. So if you've ever had that like really rapid, kind of almost scary hunger where you feel like your blood sugar is dropping, that's what we want to try to avoid as much as possible. So this low and slow hunger, and then we should see um, a reduction in cravings, right? So we're always going to have some cravings, right? But this can help to some degree if you're experiencing those a lot. Okay. So again, nourishing our body, being consistent, teaming up with our body, trying to eat in a more balanced way. Again, we don't have to get too restrictive or rigid or counting, um, but just kind of paying attention to am I including the macronutrients? And then the last one is satisfied. So I think this is one that gets left out a lot of times when we talk about healthy eating. And I think this is why a big reason why it's so hard for people to stick with healthy eating, right? Because it's not satisfying. <laughs> and so eventually it leads to something called last supper eating, where a lot of times we feel like I'm eating something I shouldn't be. So I'm going to you know, hurry up and, and, and eat it as much as I can, because this might be the last time I ever get to have it. And we kind of have that ongoing mindset. 
Whereas we go into it with this idea that I'm going to eat foods that satisfy me both physically, but also emotionally, um, then it is so much more sustainable, okay? And what this actually does from a psychological standpoint is it can help to decrease that overeating, that binging, that last supper eating um, because we're not thinking of food so much as good or bad, okay? And it gives you a sense of agency, right? You get to decide what feels good for you, what doesn't feel good for you versus some external rule that's telling you you can't eat this, you can't eat that. So eating for satisfaction. Okay, what to do? First of all, understand that all foods can fit into a healthy diet. You're really paying attention to how they actually make you feel and what you actually enjoy. So if you, you know, really don't enjoy a food that, you know, you feel like you should be eating, it's okay. There's other ways that you can get in those type of nutrients. Okay, you don't want to be choking down food, right? On the other hand, if we're always eating for joy, we might notice we don't physically feel as well. So we want to make sure that we are balancing those two things, right? Listening to how our body feels physically, and are we actually enjoying? Does this feel satisfying? Sometimes you just eat a meal because nah, I just need some nourishment. It's not the most exciting meal in the world, but that's okay. Um, but we want to make sure that we are keeping that uh, that balance and also enjoying food. Focus on how foods make you feel learning how to honor your hunger, feel your fullness, and then of course, manage emotions with kindness. And that's really talking about learning how to manage emotional eating. We all eat emotionally from time to time, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when it starts to feel like maybe food is becoming too important or becoming a way to I mean, avoid feelings or to buffer feelings, um, then we learn how to manage them in a way that gives you a little bit more control and power over your decisions with food. So why it helps, again, when we are allowing ourselves to eat foods that we enjoy, we're showing up, we're doing it in a way that's mindful um, and honoring to ourselves, it can, again, help to prevent that deprivation binge cycle that a lot of people experience, right? Like I'm really good during the day and then I find myself like binging at night. I'm really good during the weekend and the weekends feel like I'm totally out of control. So we're trying to avoid those things by building in foods that feel really satisfying to our body. Um, it allows you to engage in your life fully. If you've ever been on a diet and you feel like, oh, I can't go out to eat with my friends or I can't do pizza night with my family or I can't take my kids out for ice cream you know you feel like you're missing out on things so when you're able to show up and do it in a way that feels mindful um, you don't have to miss out on those things but you also don't have to feel out of control in those moments either and finally helps you feel calmer and more in control with your relationship with food so those are the three things and the three places that I would start. Now, again, everybody's different. And so how we approach those might be a little bit different, but it's just something worth looking at. So again, when you're going back to choosing what to eat, you know, um, you know, the perfect meal would be a five. If you look at each of these on a scale of one to five, a perfect meal would be a five on the nourishment, a five on the balance, a five on satisfying, but not every meal isn't gonna be a five, a five, a five, right? So what we're doing is we're just trying to find, you know, the best way to balance those things. Um, and more often than not, um, eat things that are higher on that scale um, and allow us to feel nourished, balanced, and satisfied. And it's just something that we just keep working on and we keep tweaking and we keep just kind of listening to our body and seeing what feels good um, and, and what doesn't feel good and then making the tweaks from there. So again, this is just a really great, simple place to start off. Again, I like that it um, allows you to have a mindset of food abundance. What can you add in? What can you do? How can you team up with your body and really make sure that it's getting, you know, what it needs to help you feel the best. So um, that is the Nourish Balance Satisfy Method. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me, melissa at melissaadrian.com. I always love hearing from you. Otherwise, hope this helps and I'll talk to y'all later.